There are so many messages. I wish I could share a few more with you before we proceed. But let's 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 continue uh, with the discussion on the corruption fight. But remember always that this show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner. MTN everywhere you go. Ashasi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa. Consolidated Bank Ghana, we stand with you. Duraplus, where Duraplus goes, water flows. We lead, we build home for you. Star Assurance, your solid partner. And Rehoboth Properties. My guest, uh, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, is still here in the studio with us to discuss the manifesto, um, replacing or taking the place of Richard Ahyagba, Executive Director, G uh, Dankwa Institute, is Yao Boabe Asamoa, the Honorable MP for Adentang and Director of Communications of the New Patriotic Party. Um, so, Wawa and Samoa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Boabe and Samoa. Thank you very much, sir. Great. Okay. So, uh, clearly understood that uh, this is uh, an area of comfort for you. You had been in the area of the uh, good governance and anti-corruption fight, uh, civil society, uh, before you got into mainline uh, politics. I uh, remember you with the uh, Ghana Integrity Initiative uh, staff. So clearly, uh, you must have assisted your party in a great deal in determining what deserves attention as far as corruption is concerned. Do you think, start, start off, do you think that you have done well enough by simply just telling us what institutions or laws you have passed over the period and, and spending just two paragraphs to say you will continue to fight corruption? Do you think you have done well enough with that as far as your manifesto is concerned? Yes. I, I think it's the most important thing to do that the manifesto recognizes what has been started. Uh, you need a very strong league and institutional framework to fight corruption consistently, reducing human contact and improving access to services without that intervention. So these things we have been doing, the institutions we've been setting up, the rules we have made, the ones we are continuing to make, the investments in institutions to improve their uh, staffing position and their logistics position in order to better deter, prevent, uh, and prosecute corruption are things that are ongoing. Uh, President Kofo uh, started with quite a bit of it, delivering the internal audit acts and the uh, procurement acts and all that, and we have continued. So, so it is a question of not mere proliferation of acts or otherwise, but the implementation, the effective implementation of these acts that we have passed and the institutions that we have set up. So you will notice that the 2020 intent, the two paragraphs, it says clearly that we are going to continue improving the institutions. We are going to continue investing in the institutions and enhancing their capacity, which means the laws we have passed will ensure that they work. And then we are going to establish effectively the operational mechanisms for the ITI Commission. Mm. And that is a very big one. Right to information is a huge one. And that law lay in Parliament for over 21 years. And this Parliament had a political will. This government engaged, had the political will with the Parliament to pass it. And now that it's been passed, it's the biggest window for sunshine. Into, into impunity. And if we operationalize that, even that alone, as an operational mechanism into the next four years, in addition to the Office of the Special Prosecutor, will be a huge, huge, huge advance mm. in, in fighting corruption. You, you make specific reference to the RTI, and uh, President Kufado himself, when he was also leading the charge to ensure that it was passed into law, 
uh, didn't mince words, including uh, his independence anniversary speech, that the RTI was the most important uh, piece of legislation, anti-corruption legislation. Um, have you followed what the RTI coalition has had to say um, about the rather unfortunate attitude in implementing the RTI? Samson, it's not an unfortunate attitude. I sympathize with them. But let's face it, Samson, you are part of civil society in this country. You are part of an organization which is in the private sector that works. And that organization deals with the public sector. One of our biggest problems in this country is implementation. Implementation, uh, supervision, enforcement. Those are soft issues in public policy and, and ruling out uh, uh, that policy. That really hampers our ability in this country. So, yes. It is one thing passing the legislation, then it's another thing operationalizing it. And that is the challenge we face and we are going to confront. And that is why it is one of the two items going forward into 2020 that we've isolated. The item one says we will continue with everything we are doing. Then item two specifically isolates ITI and says we will implement it. So the challenge, and again, I want to reemphasize that I sympathize with the RTI coalition when they complain about implementation. But it should be positive complaints. Mm. It should be about challenging our inability to be consistent, to be consistent with implementation. And, and therefore, as we go forward, I want the coalition to support government in allocating resources, support government in sourcing for staff, support government in establishing the working rules and regulations and support government in dealing with the outcomes that the commission delivers to the people of Ghana. The, the, clearly, if, the if, there is, is there. if there is one particular coalition or civil society um, that has contributed directly to assist a particular process, that will be the RTI uh, coalition. And this RTI coalition, you know... Uh, a lot more that even the passage of the law yes. from day one since 1999 when uh, the first draft bill was done by the IEA this coalition has been at the forefront uh, with That's very good. very formidable legal minds like Akotoan Pao and they have drafted a number of documents to assist it and push for the passage. After the passage, they have still gone ahead to actually draft, you know, rules to assist the process. And yet, this is the one law that we passed and decided to suspend the operation for one year. And then January, it was supposed to kick in. We are in October. And the basic structures still don't exist. Now, when they issued the statement this week, they asked the question, what have you also done about public institutions' attitude to request for information? It's been very bad. There's been silence. There's no commentary from the government. Samson, I am very, very proud of the RTI coalition. I'm a, I'm a foundation member of the coalition through my work with Ghana Integrity Initiative. Mm. And illustrious legal minds, like you're saying, I mean, uh, uh, the late Darocha, uh, IEA, the current uh, head of the Electoral Commission. When the current the Speaker IEA, of Parliament. Uh, the current Speaker of Parliament. Mm. Fantastic people, strong legal minds. Yoko uh, Tuampao. Uh, many, many, many people have supported that. Pro and indeed, it's across the aisle. It's across the aisle because I remember we ran a training workshop with an international uh, partner where then uh, John Mahama, who was the uh, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Information, came. Uh, I think he had just become Minister of Information. He came to open the workshop. And we shrugged, and we shot Jimabwedi. You know, Henry Prempe, they, they work. That coalition is, is the biggest collection of minds, like you say. 
And I think that coalition has succeeded to the extent that finally the IPI is passed. Mm. It's our mutual challenge. Let us get it operational. Government is a bureaucracy. Bureaucracies have their ways. I, I believe very strongly that the passage of the law itself demonstrated more than enough political will on the part of government. Now, going into the bureaucracy of setting up the commission and staffing it and timelines and all that is where our implementation challenge as, as a snail paced bureaucracy comes in. We cannot afford to let that slow us down too much. It's already slowed us down quite substantially. So going forward, uh, uh, post this 2020 election, I expect and I believe very strongly that the new patriotic party uh, will win the election again and now will form the next government. I believe very strongly on, on uh, evidence on the ground. Mm. And that going forward, the coalition should continue to partner government. The coalition should not spare government any blushes, just like they've been producing papers, just like they've been producing warnings. That is the kind of, uh, you know, kick uh, the bureaucracy in the ass approach that will fundamentally entrench sunshine in, in our regular dealings. Okay. Because it's all about sunshine. All right, and so corruption is yeah. all about sunshine. Mm -hmm. Th this may be very, very important, uh, but uh, let's not reduce it to an RTI discussion. Um, but I was, I was a bit disappointed uh, to read that you put in your manifesto that the RTI, like you said earlier, uh, had taken 21 years, and then you state in there that it has straddled six parliaments. Uh, I, I, I asked myself, why? The manifesto committee, didn't they co consult Yabuabia Samoa or Akotuampao, that it has gone through only the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh parliament, and not six, six different parliaments? Uh, that was a blunder. I think it's unforgivable. I and, and the coalition looks at it also, and t it tells us a bit about uh, how serious uh, you may want to approach it. But I said, let's put that aside. I, 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 accept, <laughs> I accept responsibility. I was a member of the committee, the manifesto committee, and mm. sometimes editing. You, you are familiar with editing. The more you look over a document, the, the less likely you will catch very tiny details as you, you can continue to scan a document. I accept liability absolutely for that. Thank you. Now, uh, so the NDC, unlike the NPP, and I asked him whether he thought that just the two uh, paragraphs, bullet points that they make. They say, number one, continue to improve the financing of governance and anti-corruption MDAs, like the Ministry of Justice and Office of the Attorney General, Office of Special Prosecutor, Office of the Auditor General, a lot of questions there, Office of the Auditor General, NCC, Shraj, and IOKO, to enable them recruit, continue to train, and retain dedicated staff to support the fight against corruption. Two, provide resources for the Right to Information Commission to operationalize effectively the Right to Information Law. Now, the critique by some is that uh, there are aspects of the NDC's manifesto that clearly suggest that you are listening to the people and what they need now, and you are making provisions for them solving their problems with your seeking to solve their problems with your manifesto directly mm -hmm. like when it comes to uh universities bill you come clean you say you're against it when it comes to legal education you say we are going to open it up in this manner because that's not what is being done now when it comes to good governance and corruption accountability as you had you had in your constitution uh, your manifesto you have put a lot of things, but they are general, and they are things we already know. You don't pinpoint one specific present concern and address it directly, like you are doing with Okada and the rest of them. I disagree with you on that. In uh, fact, you guys don't mention RTI at all, and the RTI coalition is not happy with you at all. <clears throat> On the matter of lack of specifics, I disagree. Mm. I will have to concede on the RTI mm. uh, that uh, the implementation challenges that 
we are confronted with should have been highlighted. Perhaps members of the Manifesto Committee took the view that once it has been passed, and we all have been part of this effort, yeah. uh, and we must commend the RTI mm. coalition. At some point, as NUC's president, I, I, I was uh, an active member mm. uh, of, of the coalition. Uh, I, 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 I want to believe that because it's been passed by parliament, uh, the implementation challenges uh, uh, did not feature because mm. probably the hard, and, and, the, the, the hard work has been and done. And having mentioned certain peoples with it, I have to deliberately mention mm -hmm. Alban Bagwin, yes. uh, Harun Idrisu. They, they also did quite a fantastic good job work. Fantastic, uh, with fantastic it. Job. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic job with, with that. Uh, but in terms of specifics, uh, if you come to page 110, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. It says, numerous corruption scandals, such as the Power Distribution Service, PDS, bulk oil storage and transportation, bus company, mm -hmm. Australian visa scandal, fraudulent National Youth Authority, NYA street lighting contract, Kelney GVG fraud, Kroll and Associates, the Galamse fraud on small-scale miners, missing excavators fraud, and the Ejapa royalty scandal are further <laughs> testimonies to this tacit support and endorsement of corruption. The next NDC government will thoroughly investigate all these acts of corruption. If you go out there talk to a lot of civil society organizations, I listen to them, Dr. Steve Mantia, your own colleague, Manasseh Aziri Awuni, this, these scandals keep coming up strongly and they want to see investigation, they want people to be held accountable. Even the Office of the Special Prosecutor this week, earlier this week, raised concerns that the documents he's looking for on the Ejapa matter, the documents have not been forthcoming, and he's asking current authorities but these things you are talking to about be up and doing. So if, an institutional so, so, approach. So, so, so if you are talking about specific examples, okay. we list them. Now, in terms of the institutional approach, we, we, if you look at page 108, we mm. say building strong institutions, 10.1. Right. Mm. The NDC resolves to build strong institutions by taking bold steps to ensure increased and adequate funding and engaging well-qualified and st well -qualified staff of proven integrity to manage and lead existing anti-corruption agencies. These institutions include Parliament, the Audit Service, the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, I don't want to remind uh, listeners what has happened at the, the, the audit service, hmm. how at the Commission of Human Rights you had the Deputy Commissioner position left vacant for virtually three years, Economic and Organized Crime Office, and the Financial Intelligence Center, among others. As part of our commitment to the fight against corruption, we shall adequately empower and resource the Office of the Special Prosecutor and other anti-corruption agencies to do their work effectively. 10.2, Nepotism and Growing Corruption. In line with this renewed focus to strengthen the fight against nepotism and corruption, the NDC will introduce legislation to regulate agency representation. And this is very important because this, this, this is missing in our laws, and other jurisdictions have done that, especially OECD countries. So agency representation and the conduct of business practices of multinational companies in line with international best practices. And here we discuss at length the matter to do with lobbying. Lobbying in other jurisdictions has been codified and is properly regulated. Here, we know it is going on, but we pretend that we don't know lobbying is going on. Mm. And that's what we mean by, by this particular you know, new piece of legislation we are proposing. We also say we will review and strengthen guidelines for political office holders, develop and launch, and, and launch by, 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 by the previous John Mahama administration. Trust and integrity in leadership, 10.3. We say that as a party that believes that personal trust and integrity in leadership is needed for the development of our country. We also believe that Ghana can fully progress if we make integrity and transparency the cornerstone of our workforce at every level. And then we talk about launching Operation Stink. 10.5. We will, as part of the Integrity for Development Action Plan, launch Operation Stink. And this is our big idea under, under fighting corruption. And we say that this is an anti-corruption crusade that will involve massive, far-reaching, practical government reforms. It will be unrelenting against all corrupt political appointees, public sector workers, and their collaborators. The next NDC government will live up to its ideals and dismantle the tentacles of kleptocratic political octopus. So 
we, we spell out exactly what we mean by, by, by Operation Sting. Words, and, words, and, and, words. And, 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 and we say that, look, at the end of the day, something, it's about track record. It's about the political will. President Mahama remains the only president in this fourth republic who has prosecuted his own. President Kufour came close by prosecuting a minister, but he was of the PNC stock. Malamisa. President Mahama prosecuted his own successfully, and it's sad to say that he's still languishing in jail. Very sad. I do not intend to profit from his pain. Not at Abu all. Abu and Sir yes. Philip Asibit. Yes. Mm. Only President Mahama has achieved that. If you look at the most credible indicator, the Corruption Perception Index, President Mahama has given this republic the highest score of 48. The highest score. Indeed, President Mahama's worst performance of 43 is higher than President Akufuado's best performance of 41. Because you know that the closer you get to 100, the cleaner your government. When you are approaching zero, you are the most corrupt. You lost the elections so, on corruption. So, so President Mahama has a far better track record. President, under President Mahama, we didn't see this phenomenon of clearing house that every appointee, even before investigations begin, the president clears them. You didn't see this intolerant posture towards anti-corruption crusaders, journalists, and others. Look at what is happening to Operation Sting, for example, is similar to what President Akufuado promised about the Anas principle. What happened? Anas's people are rather uh, uh, all apologies to the family of Ahmed Hussein Swali. We still can't find the perpetrators of that heinous crime. Never in the history of this country has an anti-corruption And we must, and we must blame and the president for that. I, I am saying that you must create an environment mm, that ensures that anti-corruption crusaders are safe, practice their work, whether as journalists or as investigative reporters, without fear. And you must protect them. You must not have a situation where people like Manasseh Azura Wuni have to be whisked out of the jurisdiction by the Media Foundation for West Africa, for example. All these examples are a blot on the record of President Akufuado. And we are saying that pound to pound, Fortunately, this is an election that the two leading parties are presenting people uh, with a track the, record. The, there's, and there's, it is clear there's, that there's President Mahama has a about far the Manasseh, the Manasseh a Azore superior. story that is not actually told when it is told in general terms. Mm -hmm. um, because there was a setting involvement mm -hmm. of the security apparatus presently constituted mm -hmm. by President Akufuado mm -hmm. in assisting Manasseh and ensuring his safety and security. And upon his, mm -hmm. his return to the country, it is a state security that is giving him cover. Good to hear, but Manasseh Azirawuni himself has written you know, copiously, you know copiously that, that, you know that, that he people, felt safer practicing under, but, but under, you, you under President Muhammad people, than under President Akufado. There are people within the political parties. <clears throat> they don't need anybody to hire them and sponsor them to mm -hmm. go and do wrong. Agree. They would sit back, watch you... Some of us, we sit here, we, we moderate mm -hmm. a certain uh, program mm -hmm. in a certain way, mm -hmm. and they feel there's a certain bias. Mm -hmm. And then they start attacking you. Mm -hmm. They may not have been hired by anybody on their own. They may feel you have said one thing wrong uh, or one thing critical of mm -hmm. the president or some other member, and then they decide to attack you. It will not be because the state has recruited them to do that. Agreed. However, how leadership responds is important. Is leadership responding in a way that seeks to give these people the opportunity? For example, when uh, uh, the Honorable Kanye Japon started this, his whole campaign against, against Anas, you saw how tacitly state media and all of that gave him platforms, and he was being encouraged. You don't need to do things like that. You have to show that even when the renegades amongst you, and I agree with you that in every political party, there is a mix. There are people who will, 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 will not... I mean, like the sunshine mm. and the fact that there are people who want to expose wrongdoing in their ranks and would want to, you know, uh, uh, take it out on those people. It's important for leadership to offer protection. You have had some of these people, mm. Manasseh himself, right, and talk about how he was given protection. Mm? 
by the present Mahama led administration. You don't see that level of tolerance under President Akufuado. This week, a video went viral of the venerable PC Apiofori, who says that he regretted not taking an appointment from President Mahama when President Mahama called him to come and help him fight corruption, to, 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 to look within, right, from the presidency. Because according to PC Apiofori, in the discussion, he told President Mahama, you know that me, I would go after all of you, including you who is appointing me. At the presidency, I'll keep my eye wide open. And he said, no, well, why not? Okay. I mean, I, I need you. Okay, so you take a and yet, there. Mm -hmm. And yet, when mm -hmm. he made a similar request to the current president, he was rebuffed. And, okay. and, and, and he, take, was not, he a, regrets take, not taking President Take a, take a breather offer. there. Take a breather there. Um, okay, so I still have my RTI people <laughs> sending me uh, messages, uh, particularly about the NDC uh, not paying attention to RTI, which is a very... Mm -hmm. uh, big, you know, uh, instrument to mm -hmm. fight corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Sami, for example, says that under your, your section titled Freedom of the Media mm -hmm. in the Manifesto, you provide a one-liner that reads, quote, continue the implementation of RTI uh, acts. And you put it under media. And it gives the impression as if you don't know what the RTI really is about <laughs> because it's not about the media. Now, Yabwabi yeah, Asamwa, the, the challenge thrown to the NPP, uh, especially also by civil society, is that we set up a, a special prosecutor. And you remember how the, almost the entire nation rallied around the president, so excited about what the NPP wanted to do, civil societies endorsed this and participated in processes to ensure this was done and it was passed very quick uh, some say over the period what what have we seen so it's not really about telling us that you have passed legislation and you continue to work with them they want to hear more than that what do you what do you uh, say about that Hello, Yao. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you now. Uh, I am glad you exposed the NDC's hollow uh, anti-corruption manifesto. It's just English. L look at Operation Sting. Massive, far-reaching measures. What are massive, far-reaching measures? They are nothing. Far-reaching measures are concrete steps that you take, including the fact that they are talking about strengthening the Auditor General's office. And in 2014, the Auditor General's office didn't even have computers, much more uh, uh, logistics. Since 2014, we from 2017 have resourced that office massively, massively, and in percentage terms, 28% uh, in 2017, up in their budget, 77% in 2018, 2017, and then 2018, and now 27% in 2019. The Auditor General indeed came out to commend us. That is what we mean. When we talk about guidelines for public sector employees, we are actually about to pass the Public Officers uh, uh, Code of Ethics Law. And it is something they hang around with for over eight years they couldn't do anything about. You talk about resourcing institutions. You must respect the outcome of institutional uh, reports. They keep talking about institutions, and then they undermine those institutions by discrediting the investigative uh, actions of those institutions. You can't blow hot and cold. But happily, happily, they accept that they will continue the special prosecutor's office. That is a very, very important one. Between the special prosecutor and RTI, I think that's the future of anti-corruption in Ghana. And I'll tell you why. Because the biggest problem of corruption in Ghana is impunity. Corruption is the ability of public officials to drain public resources with impunity. And why that impunity? Because they felt beyond prosecution. They felt beyond control. They felt beyond supervision. They felt beyond the law. They were the law. Now you have an office that is entirely different, uh, independent of everybody, including an incumbent. And therefore nobody can do otherwise. And the record of that, interestingly, is... Martin Amidu, 
asking the finance ministry to furnish a document from a Japan. Mm -hmm. That the office is able to do that in an incumbent era is the kind of situation we are talking about. It is so important that an office that is capable of acting against past governments and current governments with full authority to do so is the one that leads the fight against corruption in Ghana. Because like I'm saying, and I'm repeating, that fight is about impunity. Mm -hmm. So what has the office done? I think the office basically, and I'm very, very frank and hard here, the office has an operational and administrative aspect. I think as a new institution, the emphasis should have been on the ability to establish administrative workflow structures that would support its operational output. Unfortunately, the administrative part of it has been slow. It has been terribly slow. There have been public spots about whether or not the office is receiving enough money or otherwise. And clearly, from the budgeted uh, uh, positions over the past two, three years, its budget, the last one was even bigger than that of the Attorney General's office. But you must have put in place administrative measures to draw down on those budgets and use it to support your operational efforts. And I think that in spite of Mr. Amidu telling public record of integrity, his activism, uh, when it comes to the administrative aspect of establishing a new institution, a very sensitive institution like the Office of the Special Prosecutor, perhaps uh, we have more questions uh, than so, 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 so what, what, what people are asking, the generality of the public is asking is, this was one legislation, you had, you had tremendous goodwill, and you passed it really quick. And we have, we have spent the entire tenure of the regime, and we can't show, so to speak, any fruit from that yeah. office. Something. Who is to show, the government or the prosecutor? That is the difficult, delicate situation we are in. Mm. Can the government wade in and show we are doing this with the special prosecutor? That it will undermine the very independence. The very if you, if you celebrate, office. if you celebrate the passage of the law and the establishment of that office, you take credit for it. You would definitely take credit for what it does. Yes. So people have credit. a right to ask what is going yes. on. It's a legitimate question. I'm trying to explain the difficulty and the, the, the paradigms involved in that question. Mm. First of all, the, the, the fundamental pillar of that office is the inability of the incumbent government to manipulate it. Independent. Mm. If it is set up in such a way that the incumbent government can walk in and say, do this, do this, don't do that, then it undermines the entire principle, which is that an office that can fight impunity in and out of government. Mm. So having set it up and having appointed the leadership, the government must stand back and let the leadership work. The government cannot wade in and out and ask questions of the office and demand answers of the office, which would appear to be undermining the independence that we all cherish so much. Because if it's the government, the office is to succeed, it must be based on its independence. It must be based on its objectivity. It must be seen to be an office that is not under the dictate of anybody. As it stands now, clearly nobody can say that we are dictating to Mr. Amidu. And indeed, let me go back and say, not only was the setup failed, the appointment of Mr. Amidu was also failed. Why? Because it's unprecedented in African politics. To have a high-profile personality from your opponent, your biggest opponent, head an office with capacity to cut off your head, literally. So that is the power that the Office of Special Prosecutor has. Mm. can cut off your head. But, but beyond, so, the, beyond the Special Prosecutor matter, uh, yes. Samuel Kujia told Ablakwa echoes another point that yes. the conduct of the government itself it has, been, has been... The conduct of the government has been faulted to be problematic. Where, uh, you know, the issue came up about uh, clearing agents as a president was said to be clearing his appointees and so yeah. on and so forth. That, that was yeah. such a dampener on uh, the fight against corruption. It wasn't. It wasn't. I have addressed it earlier in my remarks, but I'm glad you bring it up so we can isolate it and address it. 
You see, Okoye Do and the NDC, because it's politically powerful and and attract votes, will lift a litany of events that they describe as corruption, fraud, scandal, even when those matters are still born. And in that sense, uh, his audacity, when the same thing was done about uh, what that is, Waterville and, and that thing, I saw Photon and all that, he was in the center of those things. I saw Photon, Waterville, and all those things that happened. He was in the center, and they were listed. Center as now, what? He was in the center the as what? Thing. Uh, <laughs> in the center as what? So the center, list, the center as what? Was in the, the center, center as what? what? They are in the center as what? The things you are listing. Who is responsible? Who is in the center as what? The things you are listing as fraud. No, no, fraud, no, no, fraud. no. That's to be fair, to be fair, to be fair, to be to be fair, yeah, Bobby Asama. To be fair, when 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 you name him driving isofoten. No, when you name him. Sorry, hmm. sorry. When you name him as being in the center. You should tell us how exactly you mean by I'm being in the center. Exactly. You mentioned you, you mentioned uh, Wyomi and the rest of them. Yes. So how this, how how, how do you mean water. by being in the center? He had been the one pushing for the payments for Isofoton to go through. Me? How that how did I do that? Yes, that was what was being said in public at the time. It's the same thing he's saying now, listing uh, things that, in the opinion of the NDC, is fraudulent and corrupt. Without basis, without foundation, that's what I'm driving at. That it is popular. So, 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 so you are now, aware that what you are saying is without basis, but you think oh, that you should, I, 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 on you such a over. serious you platform, you phone, should put it oh, out. Samsi, I want to accept this. Samsi, I want to accept this. Have you allowed him to What I will not phone? accept, what Samsi, I will not I accept, accept, what I will not accept is your deliberate, you your, 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 public, your deliberate you attitude, public, your deliberate attitude to defame me. Go on the internet everywhere your name was there. That's what I'm saying. That you can't continue to make allegations against others when you haven't proven anything. What is fraudulent about a Japan that you have proved? Uh, that you are now calling a fraudulent deal. Okay, so, so, yeah. So now. So, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah just, just a second. Just let a second. Me address something. No, no, yeah, let just hold on. Let me address something. With, with, let with, me address something. Oh, with the, with the greatest it. of respect, I'll let you do so. No, so now, with due deference to you so, as, uh -huh. as, as my senior at the bar. Yes. You name a person, and yes. you are not referring to any evidence whatsoever, and you are just saying his name was out there. I mean, is that the, is that the way you want us to have the conversation no, about fighting corruption? I was drawing an analogy about the list he made. He said that Japan is fraudulent. This is fraudulent. He made a list. I was I'm reading from a manifesto. What we will investigate? What we have stated, we will investigate. Made. I did not mention any name. What you are doing is mentioning a name, me directly, and, and attacking my person. And Google. It was your name not linked directly with Isofoton as being the one who was pushing for the payments? How? Is it not a and fact? How? Who proved that? Where was that? It was for me to prove. That was in the public domain. That's what I'm saying that now you are doing the same thing. You are putting things... I, 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 I thank God the recordings of this program will be available after this program. It's a Japan for the length. Is be prepared for the consequences. Be, pre pre be prepared for the consequences of your of of, of, of your baseless conduct this All morning. All the personalities involved in the Japan, you have, have damaged their name immediately by saying that. Did I mention anybody's name? About? We said we will investigate these matters. That is what is stated in but the you, you manifesto. Said you said fraudulent. You have Did I mention a name? Fraudulent. Did I mention you a name? Who that is fraudulent? And I'm saying that that kind of reach, but was your name not mentioned on the internet? Who has concluded when the speech? manifesto says the next NDC guy will thoroughly investigate these acts? I'm reading fraudulent. from the you manifesto. Use the word fraudulent. You qualified it with fraudulent. Okay. You use fraudulent. Okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. Let's let's proceed. Let's proceed this way. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Yeah, this, is, this is for the benefit of the public. Uh, let's let's, let, let's proceed this way. Let, let's proceed this way. Let's proceed this way. Methodology. No, no, hold on, hold on. Let me withdraw whatever it is and move on. Whatever he doesn't like, I've withdrawn. Let me move on. Now I'm saying, whatever he doesn't like, I've withdrawn. You, I you, you cannot make specific accusation against and say whatever I don't like. I withdrawn. withdrawn. Let's move on. Now I'm saying that the very way they say the presidency is a clearinghouse and otherwise is the fact that they are unable to build the institutions. If you are building institutions, you don't undermine institutions by always attacking their conclusions. And that is what the NDC is doing in this current approach. 
uh, the president's the clearing house. Da, da, da. In one sentence, they wipe out the en- efforts of the entire anti-corruption agency network in Ghana. They cast doubt on their credibility. They cast doubt on their integrity. We are talking about going to employ uh, uh, people of integrity and capacity. Are they from mass? Are those people Ghanaians? Are you saying that in one fell stroke, all the people who work in the CID are corrupt? All the people who work in BNI are corrupt? All the people who work in Yoko are corrupt? All the people who work in NCC are corrupt? All the people who work in Shraj are corrupt? That is the kind of far-reaching generalization. It's, but but is, this your, is this your interpretation not overstretching the way the, mas- the matter but was put? It is how it appears in public. Because they are the institutions who are doing the investigation. Yoko. They are the why, 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 why is it that why 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 is it for example that when the MPP came to power, almost all the heads of some of these institutions were were moved, you know, removed and then replaced? Does that suggest that those who were there were incompetent or something, or they it were corrupt? Not, it is it is not enough to change the head of an institution. We live in a government where heads of institutions mm. are sitting there, and the middle layer is acting against them. It's a fact. It's part of the implementation bottlenecks we are having. Mm. So we must begin to get to the point where we realize that the institutions are of the state and not of government. The institutions are of the state and not of the political party that is presently in charge of the government. Okay. When we get to that point, mm. we will realize that objectively every institution will be respected for its integrity based on the quality of its work. And okay. institutions will feel protected enough to deliver the kind of work that will advance the public purpose. Okay, so, so, so yeah, 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 I'm taking a quick break here. When we return, um, I'll ask you a couple of questions about what you have come under attack for us in the government by not political parties, but civil society. Civil society, uh, in the history of this country, we are told, there's never been a time when civil society comes together in the way they have been doing in fighting a government for some of the things in this area of uh, corruption we are, we are talking about, including uh, the Auditor General's office. We'll be right back. Thank you.
Yeah, welcome back. This is News File, and my guest, uh, um, Boabing, yeah, Boabing as Samoa, the Honorable MP for the Adentan constituency, and also the Communications Director of the NPP, uh, Samuel Okujato Ablakwa, the Honorable MP uh, for North Tong, and uh, ranking foreign affairs in Parliament. Now, this show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, MTN. Ashasi University, Consolidated Bank Ghana, Duraplus, Waylead, Star Assurance, and Rehoboth Properties. Now, you, you mentioned in your manifesto that you are going to do certain things to strengthen institutions, including the Auditor General. Yeah. And I told Boabing Asamwa that I'll come to that question. Mm -hmm. Now, in the, in the World Bank's latest publication, it's a report mm -hmm. uh, titled Enhancing Government Effectiveness and Transparency, the Fight Against Corruption. They take about three countries to study about how corruption is fought using the Auditor General. Mm -hmm. And they spend such, such enormous time on Ghana's Auditor General uh, Audit Service but they have a lot of emphasis and focus on Daniel Yaudomelevo and using him as an example for all other countries across the world on how to fight corruption. What that tells me is that that institution in Ghana is one of the best and selected among three to use as an example for the world. So what exactly are you going to do to, to that institution, which is already a shining example? Well, I, I think that we are clear uh, at page 109 of our manifesto, where we state in specific terms that we will strengthen the Auditor General's office by safeguarding its independence. Safeguarding its independence. We are of the view that the Auditor General must be given free room to operate and that there should be no interference. The interference on the scale that we have seen. I mean, the whole Domelevo episode, it's a classic example of just how to allow corruption to fester, to thrive. You do not do this just because the Auditor General decided to go after senior people or the so-called untouchables in your government. And we all know the facts surrounding this matter. As soon as he started to go after this Kroll and Associates matter, we saw how elements within this government came after him. The court cases proceed on leave. The, 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 the lock to his office door has been changed. I mean, it's the first time that in the Ghanaian public we are, we are hearing that when you are asked to so proceed on leave, is that, that the lock thing, is changed. What is that thing so, that you say you will do we are saying, we are for saying, his independence? We are saying that we are mm. saying that if you look at the laws now, if mm. you look at the, the current architecture, the framework allows for that independence to be respected. Mm. So just respect it. Just go by the laws. Do not interfere. Don't, don't send letters and, and direct that he should be asked to the, proceed. There, there's to, no to, independent to, 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 to institution that is not subject to the constitution or one way or the other. So Exactly. We are, we are under the law. So, and it's human beings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a political leadership that... that follows the law uh, that ensures that the law is respected and what okay. what we are saying is that safeguard the independence of that office okay. regardless of uh, whoever I suppose, is there I whether suppose, you like the person mm, or not whether yeah. the person is coming after you or not. I, I that's suppose, why i say that the track yeah. record of president mahama is very important i, I suppose we need he to allows, find, he allows we need, to, we need to find time to to take care of this topic properly because the discussion on the secessionist group uh, issue yeah. Yeah, uh, took. took quite a lot of our time. Okay. Uh, we've run okay. out of time. I have just a minute for Yabu Abinga Samoa. Uh, what assurance can you give that uh, beyond the, the black letter words we find in your manifesto, there will be anything yeah. different in the fight against corruption? Digitization is changing our human relations. All the things we are doing, the Companies Act we've passed, witness protection, the Insolvency Act, the e-commerce platform that we have put on the, uh, the public procurement website, the standardization of user prices, 
as well as the intention to put in the office of the Auditor General a value for money unit. All the substantive things we are doing are reducing human contact with public services. Mm. And in that sense, we are reducing corruption rapidly. Okay. Petty corruption. All we are right. also dealing with grand corruption mm. at the highest level. Right. Ask them in 2013-14, in the report of the Auditor General's office, they could even give me a full computer, only salary. They are giving them only salary. All right. We have resources okay. that uh, I'm sorry, but we have run out of time. Thank you very much, Yao Bwabinga Samwa is the Honorable MP for the Adentan constituency and Director of Communications of the New Patriotic Party. He has a very difficult task in that constituency that doesn't uh, keep faith and uh, fidelity to one MP. <laughs> <laughs> also here is Samuel Okujetua Blakwa, the Honorable MP for Norton and Ranking Member Foreign Affairs uh, Committee of Parliament. We had Richard Ahiagba, Executive Director, Dankwa Institute, and Dr. Theo Echampong, Economist, Political Risk Analyst, and Senior Fellow, Imani Africa. I'm Samson Ladi Anyanini. This has been News File. Uh, God willing, we'll come your way next week with another interesting edition of the show. Forgive us for not being able to read all the tons of messages that you sent. Have a good afternoon. <laughs>